Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well today we've got a little awesome team section for you. We've got a little title up here with our team and we've got some images of the people on our team when we hover over them. It's going to pop up with some information about them. Really easy to do. There's no coding involved in this today. We're just using the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. Really easy to do. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder so we can build on the front end. Once enabled, let's go down and I'll delete this row. I've got a section here. Inside, I've got two rows, one with a title, simple title up there, and the one with our images in. I'm going to delete the one with our images in and we'll start from scratch. So let's add a new row. Little green button here to add a new row. I'm going to give mine three columns, just like I did before. And I'm going to be using an awesome little blurb module for this today. I love the blurb module. It's got some great features. You can have an image or an icon. OK, it's going to pop out. It's going to give us this little box here. Put your name in there, or the name of the person, of your first person. Any info that you want to put them about here. And we're going to give this a fixed setting, so it doesn't matter how much text you've got, as long as it's not too much, they'll all be the same size. So put in whatever you want to say about your employee there. And this is a regular text field, so you can bold, italicize, make bullet lists, make things into titles if you want to. I think I'll give him a position. Let's say, let's say shipping manager. Drop that down to another line and we'll just bold up that just to make it stand out a little bit from the other. Down below we've got image and icon. This is where you can place an image up the top here or, or one of the icons that they have. I'm going to use an icon today. Divi's just partnered up with Font Awesome 4. So there's a huge amount of icons. I'm going to search for a person icon. That's fine. Let's just use the generic right there. That works for me. Like I say, there's a huge amount there. If you're not quite sure and you want to view them all, the easiest option is to hit this little button here and it'll pop out into a breakout box and you can start scrolling. And you're going to be scrolling for a little while there. There's a lot of icons. Okay, very good. We've got our icon in there. You can link this to somewhere if you want to link it to their Facebook page. You can link the title to one place and the whole module to somewhere else if you want to. Or you can use the same link in both if you want to make sure they go to the same place. Always best practice with links. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off-site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Great. Well, I'm done with our little content tab here. I'm not going to add anything else at the moment. Let's go to our design. Image and icon. I'm just simply going to turn mine blue. You can change size and placement if you want to, but that's going to actually work for me fine. Don't want to change the width or the alignment. Let's move on down to our title here, and you can either scroll down to title text, or you can go over, hit the little blue circle with a paintbrush icon. It'll take you straight to it. That's a heading four. That's fine. I'm going to make mine perhaps semi-bowl, as it's his name. Let's capitalize it. I'm going to pop it in the middle, and again, I'm going to make it blue. And if we roll down again, here's our body text down below. I'm going to leave that pretty much as it is. I just want to align it to the middle. Fantastic. So I'm done with our text. What I think I'll do is just so I can see where this ends is I'm going to give it a bit of box shadow and then give it a fixed height so that when we add some more and if we've got different types of text or different amounts of text, they'll all look the same. So if we roll down, Here's the box shadow. I'm simply going to pop that on. You don't have to keep it if you don't want to. I'm going to leave mine there. It's quite a nice little effect. And I'm going to add a bit of padding so we're not buffered up against the sides on left and right. And top and bottom as well. So I'm going to close up box shadow. We'll just roll up a little bit to spacing. Here's the padding. I'm going to give it, say, 25 pixels all around. Just put in the 25. It'll put in the picks. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. And we'll do the same for left and right. Okay, that's almost the shape I want. I want mine a little bit deeper because perhaps I'll have more text with the new modules that I'm going to add. So we'll shut up spacing. Just above spacing, we've actually got sizing. If 
we roll down a bit, you're going to find height there. I'm going to try, say, 350. That should work for me. And as we're putting an image behind it, again, just put in the 350. It'll put in the pics for you. As we're putting an image behind it, you want to think about the aspect ratio of your image. That's going to work for me for a sort of profile picture sort of shape. Obviously, you can add more or less if it's not working for what you want. I think that's going to be a little too much. I'm going to leave mine at 350. Great. Okay, well, if you watch any of my hover effects videos, text to image, this is another one of those where the image is actually going to be residing in the column that this module is sitting in. So let's go into our row, the green tab up at the top here. Just click on the field here and it'll pop up. I want to go in there and we're working on column one. Here's column one, two, three. Let's go in there and I'm going to put an image in there. So I'm going to go over background. We got color, gradient, image, video, pattern, or background mask. I'm just going to use an image. Now let's go and find Bob's picture. If we roll down here, he looks like a Bob. Let's upload that image. And there it is behind there. That looks kind of nice, but obviously you can't really read that writing. And initially, I just want to see the, the image of this person. I don't want to see any text or anything like that. And of course, when the text is over the image, it's pretty hard to read. So I can either make that white or light in color, or we can give our module a background. So let's save this. Save the row settings. We'll go back into the module. And we'll give it a background color. As soon as I do that, Bob's going to disappear there. I'm going to go on color. I'm going to make mine the same as my background here, which is white. And we're left with that, which is great. But of course, initially, I just want to see Bob's face here. I don't want to see this info. And then when they put their mouse on it, I want this to sort of fade in over the image. Let's go over to our design tab in the blurb here. And if we roll down, you'll find filters roll down a little bit more you'll find one called opacity. Now opacity is transparency or see-throughness if you like. When we first view this I just want to see Bob's image so I want to make this module invisible. You can do that by sliding this slider all the way down to the left there just like that. Then when we hover over it I want to bring it back. Now this is common to all Divi modules if you hover over the dark writing inside you'll see some icons appear. We're working with opacity here. If there's a little arrow icon, there is in our case, you can click on it and it'll let you set, set a desktop state, opacity zero, desktops when your mouse is not on it, which is correct, and a hover state, which is obviously when your mouse is on it. When the mouse is on it, I want it to be fully visible with the info about Bob, just like that. Fantastic. So when the page loads initially, we're going to have that. When they hover their mouse over it, we're going to have that. Now the time it takes to go from desktop to hover state by default with Divi is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick, just under a third of a second. If you want to slow it down for a bit of grace, like I usually do with these, we can go over to our advanced tab, roll down to transitions. There's the default 300. You can either type in a value or slide up the slider here. Let's make mine about. 650 is great. You can also increment up and down with the little arrows on the side there. Don't want any delay, transition delay. I want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on there, or start to happen at least. And the transition speed curve I want to use. Ease will work. I tend to use ease in and out for my hover effects here. These are all subtly different. Some will work better than others in various situations, so do check them out. But ease in and out is my go-to for my hover effects. Great. So we've got everything the way we want it there. And of course, presuming that you've got more than one staff member, you're going to want to duplicate this. And once you've got the first one done, it's really easy. We'll just go into that first one here. I'll duplicate it, drag it across. And we'll duplicate it again. Two little squares one more time. We'll drag one of them across. Doesn't matter which one because they're both identical. And of course, they're only going to appear on hover. But of course, we're going to want to go in. And we'll change this, the name. 
and perhaps she's finance. And of course, you can add more text and it should still be the same size. Let's just copy this bit of text. Just for an example, there we go. Save that one. And there's Sue's one with more text there but it's the same height because we've given it a fixed height. And then of course, go into our next one over here. And let's make him IT chief technical officer perhaps. And again, you can add or delete more text. Let's just make this a little bit different. So we've got three different versions because I'm Presumably you'll have some information about each of these and it's not going to be exactly the same on all of them. Great. So we're done with our modules here. All we need to do to finish this off is put a couple of images of Sue and Dave in the background here. So let's go back into our row again. Little cog. We'll go into column two. Background. Image. Let's find a picture of Sue. There we go. We'll save that. That'll take us back to our main row. If we roll up a bit, do column three. If I move this out of the way, you should see Sue there now. Go into column three and we'll add an image for Dave. He looks like a Dave. So does he. <laughs> Let's use him. Okay. And as you can see, as soon as I put put that in there, it's there. And we should be good to go now. Let's save our changes. We'll save the row changes. Go down to the bottom, little purple button. We'll save the page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And exit the visual builder. There's our little team there when we hover over the first one. There's Bob and his info. And obviously you can link this if you want to. If you have a bio page or something. There's Sue and her info. And here's Dave and his info. So there you go guys. There's how to add a little hover effect team section to your little Divi site. Really easy to do. And that's a nice little effect to have on your desktop site. That's going to get people's attention if they're mousing around and doing that. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.